Well, my goal is to show you a few different Web 2.0 tools all in under five minutes, so here we go. Um, first, I'm starting off with Screencast-O-Matic, which is the actual screen recorder which I'm using to make this broadcast or this tutorial. Um, it's a free website. Go to screencast-o-matic.com, um, and you just can click Start Recording and start creating one of these in no time. Uh, the, the, the next website I'd like to focus on is Weebly.com. Um, the students in my class create Weebly websites in our classroom. Um, we have, I also have my classroom website on Weebly, so these are my kids, and this is like our newsletter that would go out each month, um, it's, except it gets updated every time we change something. So I have writing, reading, math, science, social studies all listed on there, and each of my students have their own website that they update. Um, right now we're in the middle of a simulation, so they, they've got their personas on there, and then they can also um, blog. So. We have a blog set up and kids can comment on the blog and you could read the comments that children make to each other. Um, this is a free website but I've paid for the uh, upgrade but it's it's fairly inexpensive and it's well worth well worth the price paid. Um, if you want to see some of the features that they have, they have drag and drop abilities um, which just makes it so much easier. If you just click on things and drag them in, it makes it it makes it so easy to do. You just drag a picture with, or a paragraph with a picture and you can click on things and edit it. It's so wonderful. I highly recommend Weebly for those of you trying to create your first websites or uh, even if it isn't your first one. Next is Glogster. Glogster is a great tool for creating posters. Um, I like this because your poster can, can actually flow. It can actually have um, videos in it. It can have photos. It can have movement. Uh, so this is their, their main page. Here's some glogs that we've done in our classroom. Um, here's an energy glog. You can see there's a moving butterfly. These are just pictures, but you can see it almost looks like a scrapbook. Um, students can be very creative, and uh, you can print these out if you'd like, or you can uh, embed them into your website. Um, here's another glog. It can have video on it, um, and students' voices can be on there. This was simply done using Photo Booth, so this can be done in just a few minutes. It's uh, a fairly simple thing to, to do in your classroom. Uh, next website is Prezi. Um, Prezi is a way of doing a slideshow, um, but it's definitely a different kind of slideshow. Um, as you can see, this one's on nuclear energy. Um, the whole field is pretty much limitless. You can uh, have, it's basically one slide, but you zoom in and out to see the different parts of the slide. So here we go. Um, be ready, it gets a little bit dizzying as we go. So here are the pros of nuclear energy. Um, we can click. You can read them. I'm going fast because I'm trying to show you many things during these five minutes. Um, but here are the cons of nuclear energy. Um, we're studying energy at the moment, trying to find alternative energy sources for our country, and we're having a debate in our classroom. So this is just one way to research, show the information that we've researched. Here comes the really dizzy part, so hang on tight. Uh, question and answers can be done pretty neatly. Uh, there's different color, but there's also the spinning. You would obviously go a lot slower with it. Um, but these are the different moves that it makes. Uh, this was made, you know, just in maybe two periods, three periods. You know, the research was part of it, so maybe it took slightly longer just because they had to find the information too, but creating it was not hard. Um, they had put all the moves in. I, I changed the moves a little bit just to make them work out a little bit better. Um, but in general, I mean, the moves only take a few minutes to create. And then you get this wonderful slideshow that you could annotate with your own voice um, and explain the different pictures for everyone and the different slides so that people understood what was going on. So that's Prezi. Uh, we've used it a couple times in our classroom. It's very, very useful. The last tool that I'll show you today is Google Docs. Uh, most people are using Google Docs, but there's, uh, there's actual Google Docs and Google Presentations. Uh, one way that I've used Google Docs is to do a super summarizer or a summary of the books that they're reading in class. Uh, the student may be in charge of summarizing the few chapters that they read for the day. I can comment on them and give them um, advice on how they can fix it. They can comment back or they can just fix it themselves and it's a great way to grade people. It can be collaborative as well. Here's another one. I, I actually had all 21 of my students collaborate on creating a preamble and a constitution for our colony in Mars and I was able to give them feedback on a day that I wasn't even in school. I was at a meeting and I got to collaborate with them from my meeting. And then Google Presentation is the final one. As you can see, you can make beautiful slides for a beautiful presentation. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you'll tune in for more tutorials from Mr. Solars. Thanks.